Hi there. Welcome to Stories in Art from the National Gallery Singapore. I'm Amy, Creative Director of Axby Theatrics, an actress and also a storyteller. I love red roses. I'm also a big fan of the lotus. You know, you can see lotuses in all different sorts of colours. They have the white lotuses, the pink lotuses, yellow lotuses and even blue lotus. You know what makes the lotus flower so special? They can grow from the darkest, muddiest, murkiest of all waters and blossom into something so beautiful. For me, what that means is that even in your darkest moments, if you stay hopeful, stay positive, something beautiful can happen. If you can see behind me, there are beautiful lotuses captured in this painting. This is Oil on Canvas, and the title of this painting is called Lotus in a Breeze. It's painted by Georgette Chen, one of Singapore's pioneer artists. She was also one of the artists who started the Nanyang style movement, which blends Western and Eastern techniques. Georgette Chen came from China and spent a huge part of her life in Singapore. She also spent some time in Paris, and you can tell from her earlier works that she was very much influenced by the French artists. Georgette loved lotuses. She especially loved painting them under the natural sunlight, which means that she would need to wake up early in the morning when the sun rises and would paint them all the way till the sun sets. What a labor of love. You know, looking at this painting and thinking about the amount of love and effort that went into painting this, also looking at the beautiful lotuses, reminds me of a story that comes all the way from Indonesia, and it's called The Princess and the Lotus. But before we start, I would like to do some warm-ups with you, because you know what? You'll be telling the story along with me. Are we all ready? Take a nice deep breath in. And give me a lion's roar. Roar! Wow, that was a pretty loud roar. Good one, guys. Another nice deep breath in. And this time, give me a snake kiss. Good. Breath in. And let's make the sound of gorillas. <laughs> Very good. Breath in. And let's all howl like a wolf. Ah, woo! Very nice. Okay, we're going to do an action song. Let me do it first and then you can join me later. And it goes like this. I'll be doing the mirror image. Swim to your right, swim to your left, swim to the front, then do a deep dive. Are you ready? You can join me now. Swim to the right, swim to the left, swim to the front, then do a deep dive. Let's do that one more time. Swim to the right, swim to the left, swim to the front, then do a deep dive. Well done, guys. You know what? I think it's time for the story. The Princess and the Lotus. Once upon a time, in the Medang Kingdom in Indonesia, lived a king and a queen. And they had a very cheeky daughter named Princess Devi Arum. The one thing that Princess Devi Arum loved above all else was, can you guess? Swimming! Whenever she saw clean, sparkling water, let's all make water-like hands. She wouldn't be able to resist and would dive into a pool. Uh, 
not swimming pools. They didn't have those in those days. It was ponds and streams, and she would start swimming away. Everybody, join me! Swim to the right, swim to the left, swim to the front, then do a deep dive. And she would swim away all her worries and troubles. And sometimes she would even forget all the duties she was supposed to do that day. The queen, her mother, would often tell her, "Princess Devi Arun, you should stop swimming. Do you know how dangerous it is to swim in ponds and streams? And what's more, swimming too long would make your skin all wrinkly." The king, the father, would also say to her, "Princess Devi Arun, you have to stop swimming. Whenever you swim." You will forget what you were supposed to do. Although Princess Devi Arun loved her parents very, very much, she couldn't resist swimming. Everybody, join me now. Swim to the right, swim to the left, swim to the front, then do a deep dive. One day, though. A terrible disease swept across the Medan Kingdom. Everyone fell ill, and some of them even died. Instead of happiness and joy and peace that once reigned in the kingdom, there was loud wailing and sorrow and cries. The king, who loved his people very, very much, was trying. Desperately to find a cure for them, he called for doctors and physicians, but no one could find the cure. One night, as the king lay tossing and turning in bed, a vision came upon him, and in that vision was a wise old man. Your Majesty. There is only one cure for your people to be found, and it is to be found in a flower that grows from a pond deep in the forest south of your kingdom. A cure for my people, found in a flower that grows in a pond deep in the forest south of the kingdom. I will send my soldiers to look for that flower immediately. No, 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 Your Majesty," said the wise old man. "Only your daughter can look for that flower. My daughter, but but the jungle is such a a dangerous and treacherous place. But the old man poof, disappeared and was nowhere to be found. And so the next morning, with a very heavy heart, the king called to see Princess Devi Arun, and shared with her what the old man had told him. Princess Devi Arun wasn't afraid at all. Oh, father, if that was what the old man said to you, then I have to do my sacred duty as the princess and find the cure, the flower that grows from the pond deep in the forest, in order to save our people. The king, although was very worried for his daughter, knew that that was the right thing to do, and so with a heavy heart, he sent her to the jungle. Along with some maids, in order to help her. And so the princess and her maids traveled into the jungle, and it was indeed a difficult, difficult journey. The sun was really, really hot, <sighs> and there were many, many insects flying around. <clears throat> and at night, when they slept in the jungle. They could hear strange animal sounds. Everybody, take a nice deep breath in and roar like the lion. Roar! Take a nice deep breath in and give me a snake hiss. Take a nice deep breath in and give me the sound of gorillas. <laughs> take a nice deep breath in and howl like the wolf. Ah! 
Even though the princess and the maids were so frightened, they knew that they had to look for the flower that grew in the pond in order to find the cure that would save their people. And so they persisted and kept on walking through the jungle many, many days, facing a growling bear. But fortunately, they managed to escape from that. And they almost drowned in the swampy river. Ah! But fortunately, they managed to escape from that too. Until eventually, they saw the beautiful pond with clean, sparkling waters. Everybody, let's make water-like hands. But guess what? You know what happens when Princess Devi Arun sees water? Mm -hmm. She couldn't resist. The moment she saw the clean, sparkling water, she dived into the pond and started swimming. Swim to your right, swim to your left, swim to the front, then do a deep dive. Princess Devi Arum, Princess Devi Arum, you're supposed to look for the flower, Princess Devi Arum. Unfortunately, Princess Devi Arum, when, when she started swimming, forgot all her worries and problems. And she forgot that she was supposed to look for the flower that would be the cure to save her people. Swim to the right, swim to the left, swim to the front, then do a deep dive. Meanwhile, in the kingdom, many, many days later, the king, who hadn't heard a word about his daughter, became very, very worried. So he decided that he would go into the jungle along with his guards to look for her. When they went through the jungle, they faced through the same challenges that the princess and her maids did. They faced the same growling bears. They almost drowned in the swampy river. But fortunately, they didn't until they arrived where the pond was at. And there, they could hear the maids calling out, Princess Davy, our room, look for the flower instead of swimming. There, the king saw his daughter swimming away in the pond while he was thinking of his people who were suffering from illness. He grew furious. Princess Davy, our room, stop swimming now. You are supposed to look for the flower that would save our people. The moment Princess Devi Arum heard her father's voice, she turned to stare at him and poof, she disappeared. <gasps> Princess Devi Arum, Princess Devi Arum, where are you? Where are you? The guards dived into the pond to look for her, but no one could find her. The kings of fury turned into fear. Oh, Princess Devi Arum, please come back, come back. She was nowhere to be found. Instead, they saw a single flower rising from the pond where Princess Devi Arum was swimming. And there, the flower blossomed. It was the lotus. The king then knew what he had to do. He went to the pond and picked the flower out. With a heavy heart, he brought the flower back to the kingdom. The flower was made into a potion that saved his people. Do you know what happened? Mm-hmm. Princess Devi Arum had sacrificed herself and became the lotus flower. And that is why, till this day, the princess in the Medang Kingdom would often honor the lotus flower in memory of Princess Devi Arum. The end. What a touching story. That was the story that popped into my head as I was looking at this beautiful painting. Can you remember the title of this painting? Very good, Lotus in a Breeze. And can you remember the name of the artist who did this? Georgette Chen. Well done. 
So the next time you get a chance to come down to the National Gallery Singapore and look at a piece of art, take the time to appreciate the time and effort and labour of love that went into it. And also maybe think about why the artist painted this. And who knows, a story might just creep into your mind. It would be great if you could share it too. I'm Amy from Act 3 Theatrics, signing off from the National Gallery Singapore. See you again soon.